Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So the other day I posted this video where I was talking about the Vega 20 leaked 3D Mark benchmarks. In that video, I went over kind of my thoughts of the age of refresh that we seem to be going into. I've seen a lot of comments where people don't seem to quite understand what a refresh actually is. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and actually make a video. Now, a lot of people get refresh and rebrand mixed up. So that's something we're gonna go over here. And if you're not entirely sure what it, we mean by a refresh, after this video, you will understand. First thing, I wanted to clarify one point. I did leave a comment on the last video, but I wanted to clarify it in this one. Uh, the scores that we were looking at, I thought that the uh, Vega 20 was 9.9% faster. In reality, it's actually the Frontier Edition that was 9.9% faster uh, than the generic VGA. So it doesn't really matter because we were just speculating over basically what the performance could be on seven nanometers, uh, but I did want to point that out. Now the whole reason for this refresh talk really comes from the supposed leaked specs for the GTX 1180. Now, the reason why we believe that it's going to basically just be a refresh is because of its die size, and Volta, for the most part, other than having tensor cores, is largely unchanged from Pascal and Maxwell. To demonstrate this, I pulled up the block diagram for the GM104, so that's the GTX 980, and this is the GP104, which is the GTX 1080. So that makes a lot of sense. But if you're looking at this, you can see that Pretty much, other than the fact that there's more shader cores, more SMs, these are exactly the same. There is no difference, this is just bigger. And that's mostly just due to the fact that we had a process change from 28 nanometers over here down to 14 or 16 nanometers at TSMC. So they're able to cram more shader cores into a smaller area. So that's the reason why there's more of them but at the end of the day, there's really nothing changed here. Moving on to actually looking inside the shader modules themselves, you can see that they are designed and laid out exactly the same. What this means is it's the same architecture. And that's why when you hear people say that it's the same architecture, that means it's the exact same thing. That doesn't mean that there's not tweaks here and there and little things to make the newer GPUs a little bit faster at certain things, but overall they are largely unchanged. Now looking at something like the Fermi GF110 as compared to the GP104, now granted these are not the exact same images, but you can clearly see like the Giga thread right here versus this overarching engine here is significantly different. That's just the easiest thing to visually see here. There are many other differences, but that one you can clearly just see from this diagram. And that is a difference in architecture. These are two completely different architectures, so they run differently. Now something like Polaris and Vega is actually a little bit more complicated. I really wish that they had the same color scheme going on, but this was really the only block diagram I could find for Vega. But as you can see here, it's very, very similar in layout for the most part. These are technically the same architecture, but they changed the CUs on Vega, and I couldn't find a good image of the CUs for the NCU on Vega to demonstrate that further. But you can see that it is a little bit different here in this block diagram. But the rest of the architecture is largely unchanged except for the HBM versus the GDDR controllers down here. Now what a rebrand is, is when you have the exact same chip, nothing is changed, you just change the name. Now, if we compare the RX 480 and RX 580 head to head, we see both 14 nanometers, both 5.7 billion transistors, both 232 millimeters squared, both 36 compute units, which comes up to 2304 shader units, both have 144 TMUs, both have 32 ROPs. Now, the clock speeds change and things like that, so you are going to have different performance numbers, but they are the exact same chip. That's what a rebrand is. As opposed to, like, the GTX 980 compared to the GTX 1080, we have 28 nanometers 
versus 16 nanometers. We have 5.2 billion transistors in opposed to 7.2 billion, 398 millimeters squared as opposed to 314 millimeters squared. So they were actually able to shrink this rather considerably. Now, the proposed GTX 1180 is somewhere around 400 millimeters squared, making it more similar to the Maxwell GPU than it is to the Pascal. But that's because 12 nanometers is basically just 16 nanometers just refined. You have 2048 shared cores as opposed to 2560. 25% increase here. 128 TMUs as compared to 160 and 64 ROPs compared to 64 ROPs. The biggest difference between GP104 and GM104, sorry, it took me a second there, is the boost clock was 1216 on a stock GTX 980 compared to 1733 on a stock GTX 1080. Now, as you saw on those block diagrams, there's really nothing unchanged. The only reason why it's running faster is because of this. The process change allows the processor to go up to a much higher clock speed than the Maxwell GPUs. Now, granted, the Maxwell GPUs could overclock to about 1500 megahertz regularly, but we do know that Pascal can go up to about two gigahertz and sometimes beyond. Now, GPU manufacturers aren't the only ones that do this. Intel, ever since Sandy Bridge, released their ring bus architecture. I did a video on that. You guys can go ahead and check it out there. It's a little bit more in depth, but that's the exact same architecture that we're using on Coffee Lake. So that came out in 2011. It's now 2018. So that's a good seven years that architecture has been in service. And we know AMD has Zen, Zen 2, Zen 3, and we also have the rumored Zen 5 coming sometime in the future. So what it looks like is, is all these manufacturers on GPU, CPU, whatever, what they're trying to do is instead of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, which used to be what we would get every couple of years, is they're just refining their technology. Now, this does have some advantages, and this is something that NVIDIA really benefited from last generation. When the GTX 1080 came out, it came out to glowing reviews. TechSpot over here gave it a 100, and realistically, it was really powerful compared to its predecessors. But more importantly, it was far more energy efficient. Regardless, one of the major reasons why this GPU did so well on these benchmarks is the fact that the GTX 900 series, the Maxwell series, is essentially the same architecture, meaning the drivers for this GPU just work on this one right here because it is the same architecture. Now, this is very beneficial to the GPU manufacturers because every time they come out with something new, as long as it's a refresh, they don't have to worry about starting from scratch. That was one of the big things that the Fury had a problem with as well as Vega, and we'll go over that here in a second. Working with an established architecture that already has very wide software support in games, as well as mature drivers overall, allows for very strong performance numbers right out of the gate. Now with Vega, this was another story. I think many people out there would say 80 at the release of the Vega 64 and 56, that's actually probably a pretty high score. Now, RX Vega is doing much better today because it has matured, because drivers have matured. Now, although it is a GCN architecture that we looked at, but because the compute units have changed, and I really wish I had a better diagram to show you guys, AMD has tons of slides explaining what the differences are in NCU. But because of all of those changes, it's not quite a refresh. It's definitely not a Polaris refresh. And it's more like a new architecture. It's kind of in between. But as you can see here, we're seeing pretty miserable performance. You see a GTX 1070 Founders Edition beating a Vega 64 at launch. And that's because of the fact that they went ahead and changed up the formula. Basically, the software wasn't ready yet. And that's the reason why I feel that these companies are wanting to stick with basically the tried and true. It's easier to refresh your current lineups, change them, alter them, you know, tweak them a little bit. Think of Zen Plus versus Zen, 
We have some better cash changes. Uh, the process change was pretty minimal, but it was there. And the performance output nets you about 10% increase. Now, 10% on GPUs isn't going to be enough. Nobody's gonna be okay with that. But at the same time, it makes a lot of sense because all the software out there will simply work. So for example, like PS5 using a Navi or any other GCN based GPU that comes out in the future, the software and the games that were designed for the Polaris or even the GCN1, which was probably used in the original PlayStation, it'll still work because it's the same underlying architecture. Now, if they switched everything up, software needs to be updated, and then that just leads to problems. And that's just the world we live in today. Intel has kind of started this path, make something that works, make something that's reasonably competitive, and just stick with it until you have to upgrade, which is what they had to do with Skylake X because they needed an architecture that scaled better than the ring bus architecture for more cores. So they were pretty much forced into it there and they won't change their mainstream platform to anything other than ring bus until they absolutely have to as well. Well, I hope this helps some of you guys out out there. Maybe you weren't sure what the difference between a rebrand and a refresh was. Uh, perhaps you didn't understand why they're not building new architectures all the time. It, it just really is hard, software doesn't work, a lot more development has to go into it. And if what you have works, you might as well just make it better, is ultimately what it comes down to. Now, like I said, for those of us that are used to seeing architectures change all the time, this is just the way it is. Ever since Sandy Bridge, everybody's seen that business model work so well for Intel, and everybody else is pretty much gonna be following suit. And with the less frequent changes in process nodes, so going from seven nanometers down to five nanometers, that may take even longer. I just don't think we're gonna be seeing changes and upgrades quite as frequently as we used to. Now, speaking of changes, if you guys need any gaming gear, please click the affiliate links down below. Uh, those are still Elric's uh, affiliate links over at Tech of Tomorrow. So if you guys need anything, that'll help him out. Uh, and I really appreciate everybody who's been doing that. It's great to see the community come together like this. Appreciate it, guys. And that's all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.